going to talk about hydrangeas, some hydrangeas and maybe roses, maybe some roses. And the thing about hydra hydrangeas and roses to me, which which were like the best. And it's very like, uh, I think it was in the 80s or maybe it was in the 90s, there was two bands. One was called Blur and the other was called Oasis. And some people liked Oasis and some people liked Blur and there was always fights about it and which one was the best and all the rest. And hydrangeas and roses are a bit like that. They're very different. They're, they're both great. But which one you like, which type you like, is really personal choice. And they're, they, mm, I tend to prefer hydrangeas. And then, a while later, I tend to prefer roses. I'll never ever decide which one is the best. They're both brilliant. And we just look at this rose here. Actually, it's, this, was, this video was meant to be about hydrangeas, but we just look at this rose here. This has been, this has been in flower now, certainly for two months. It's a flower carpet rose. It's just, just never stops. And it's getting a bit congested. Now, I'm just gonna get rid of, uh, see them all under, get rid of them all. The old kettles. Now, I did find last year, this delays its way. I did find that when I did that, cleaned them all up, but they didn't really flower that well. What you really have to do is be a bit firmer and remove all uh, the seed heads or the, which are, or the rose hips and then that will induce a much better reflowering. And we're at the end of July. If you, if, well, you would, certainly wouldn't cut this one back, but some of the other ones are a bit further over. And if you were to cut them hard now, cut all the old stuff out, you will get another flowering in the, the end of August and that would go into September and right into October. And that's the that's the one difference between roses and hydrangeas. Roses, uh, you get two flushes or maybe three flushes, but hydrangeas you just get one. But because the hydrangea flower tends to be papery, it, it tends to look as if it's flowering for much longer. But it's just that the flowers preserve for much longer. They only flower once. And now we look at a hydrangea here, which you could use if you wanted to do an ad for a washing powder. Uh, hydrangea Annabelle and air washing powder washes whiter than Hydrangea Annabelle. Um, it's an aborescence hydrangea from, from America and the thing about it is it's one of these hydrangeas I was never sure about. I, it doesn't like a lot of wind because what the wind does is it dam makes the leaves un unsightly, makes them sort of uh, marks them. So I was under the impression that you would put it in shade. I tried it in shade, foliage is perfect in shade. The, 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 the growths, the, the branches get very long and uh, the, the whole thing falls over. So they need to be in the sun, but in the sheltered sun, because in Ireland, the sun, normally the sun, uh, you, you face south, the sun and the wind come from the same direction. So in Ireland, you'd be always saying, oh, is it sh if it's north facing, there's no sun, there's no wind, it's south facing, plenty of sun, there's also wind. But, so you need to get a sheltered spot for that. Now, um, we sell two types. We sell an the Ordinary Annabelle, and there's one called Incredible, which is supposed to not be it's floppy. Now, it doesn't matter here because you have the gravel, and it's grown quite tight. But Incredible, it's, it says on the selling point that it doesn't flop. I found in the shade, it flopped as well. So, it is better, but it's only slightly better. Okay. Now that's the aborescence hydrangeas. So we'll just go over them again, Annabelle. Uh, not too windy, plenty, plenty of sun. Don't water them, keep them as tight as possible, grow them as tight as possible. The, the, the tree behind is suck some of the water out, which means that they don't grow excessively, which means they don't flop. Okay, that's them. Now we'll move on to the more common type of hydrangeas and we'll start over here. Um, this is your classic mop head. Now, uh, this is to go back to the old, which is better, a oasis or blur, a mop head or lace cap. The lace cap, the middle bit is missing. It just has the, the big bits around the outside, like a lace, lace cap, lacy cap. And most the garden connoisseurs prefer the lace caps. Now, I've come to the conclusion that the mop heads are better. Certainly from a distance, there's more form. The more, the mops, there's more form. 
I took. I actually prepared them. Um, and we can see here that it's sort of this bit here. It's obviously limey because in the more limey conditions, they're they're, they're pink or red. And this here is more acidic because the acidic are more blue. Now I think it's a nice combination, but I'm probably throw a little bit more sulfur in uh, later on because I prefer them. I prefer them to go to that colour. Uh, another one of the reasons that's doing so well is because we've no. I think I mentioned in another video. We've no uh, downpipes, and the water goes straight. The water from from the building goes straight in into the into the border and the hydrangeas love it. The hydrangeas love lots of water when during the growing season but the water has to be allowed to go away. They were not they are not swamp plants but they like lots of water. The funny thing about hydrangeas is a lot of those hydrangeas there they love shade but the problem with shade is if the shade is caused by big trees the big trees suck all the water out. So the shade of buildings is actually better than the shade of trees. Hydrangea here is a paniculate hydrangea, hydrangea paniculata, limelight. So all you have to remember is limelight. It is superb. And paniculate hydrangeas, like aborescence hydrangeas, you can cut them to the ground in the spring and they will still flower that year. If you do that to normal hydrangeas, no flower. It's just extraordinarily high quality plant and it uh, doesn't seem to fall over. The flowers, the flowers over time, they start to, they start to go limey. That's why it's called limelight, and they fade very gracefully and very gently. So it looks that will look good for another certainly three months. Look well worth having, uh, well worth having that plant in your garden. They were very slow this year. We had a very strange year, a very, a very, very wet and uh, cold early start. So everything is a bit later. And somebody said to me, oh, there's no butterflies around, we're all in trouble. Everyone's always giving out about the eco this and oh, we're all going to... And no, oh, there's no butterflies, no bees. And I said to him, listen, the butterflies will arrive. And they'll arrive about two weeks late. And the butterflies arrived today. And there's butterflies everywhere today. We can't look around or turn around for butterflies. Of course, none of them are obliging us this very second by coming in front of the camera. But loads of butterflies. They just arrived. They always, they always, they'll always arrive. Butterflies always arrive. Just we, we've done our videos for today, but the funny thing about this garden is you see stuff, and you just say, well, we 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 better do a video on this while it's here. It's great that you you don't have to do the work. The plants do the work. You just do the talking. And look, look, look at that purple loose stripe, white veronicastrum, spires of veronicastrum. Ice cream, still be ice cream, and we don't normally put pl same pl similar plants together, but we have on this occasion. This is a, another still be chinensis pumila, but they're very different. But it's not amazing. And then we tone it down. It's very, very striking. It's like candy floss should be called still be candy floss, not ice cream. Mistake there. And beside it we have, and it's very. You can just see. A good example of the way I plant, the contrast in every way, colour, form, texture, everything between this here, the Coryopsis Zagreb, and the Stilby. Now the, how does that how does that fade? It goes it it's gonna be good for another two or three weeks and then it gets a bit bit tatty looking, but then the wind comes and blows the tattiness away and it sort of fade and then you get a nice just structural sort of a brownie sort of strawy look which brings you Completely through the winter. It's really nice. We have Sanguisorba. Very different. Hanging down. Persicaria. And if we look through here, and I'll, I'll stand in here, well, I can't even get in. I want to just to show you all the different heights all different heights all that's what we try to do and that's massive big sweep of Rebecca massive sweep of Rebecca um Calictrum Della Vei never planted just seeded in there and I left it alone 
it does I don't it's not a plant I normally plant because it does really need a stake and I'm against staking but it's, it's quite nice and finally I have to show you this because it's not meant to happen this is a uh, persicaria it's a very large one and it we got a lot of wind a few days got a lot of wind and it collapsed inside see see it inside it's completely collapsed I thought a fox or something had gone in had a bit of a picnic there but no but um I, I'd say I don't like plants that collapse and they, they, they shouldn't collapse but it's just grown so so amazingly amazingly strongly it will I think it will regrow from low down and in two or three weeks time that collapse will just disappear and it will just be abnormal and this is probably our best bee plant that we have but I've noticed and it's the bees in the afternoon in the morning there's hundreds of bees in this and then when I bring people out in the afternoon to show them all the bees that we have there's no bees there. They, so they're obviously, um, they, the bees have a sort of a system. Maybe, maybe when the rush air starts outside, the, the bees go home too.